Wanted to talk a bit about these newer bikes that are coming out. Uh, this is a, a bike, it's under a thousand, uh, it's over 500. So somewhere in that price range, entry level, uh, beginner, recreational, call it what you want. Um, pretty common now to see something with a, a one by system one by whatever the gear is back here. This happens to be a nine speed if we count all your gears individually. Uh, one chain ring here. Uh, it's not a double, it's not a triple. So we have one shifter. So just your right hand is doing the shifting for your rear derailleur. Your left hand is now free to hit the bell or hold your coffee. So these systems are uh, much easier to use. Um, a little, little friendlier, so instead of having uh, two derailleurs, to me it's like having two transmissions. It's like, okay, you got a clutch and you got two hands and two transmissions. Let's get rid of one, just worry about the rear. So um, this one has, uh, these components are Advent. So an Advent rear derailleur, kind of a new name. Um, usually seeing this in the entry level area of the bikes. Um, bikes, again, that are gonna be probably under a thousand um, so far. And the shifting is also an advent as well, so that complements each other. Um, I don't know who makes them, but uh, they seem to work okay. Um, <clears throat> so just like you, you get what you pay for type of thing, it's probably gonna be a little heavier material. The, the metal might be a little bit softer, so there might be a little more flex, so shifting may not stay in tune as long. Uh, if it takes a hit, it may bend a little easier. Those are the things you're getting um, when you're getting these, these entry-level bikes. So this bike does have a drop bar style. Um, it has this curl. That's a call a drop bar, so it drops down a bit and then it goes out. So mainly you're having, when you're riding, especially if you're a new rider, you can have your hands on top. Um, most popular is gonna be here right on the hoods. So you have access to your brake, to your shifting, and you're gonna have um, better better feel for, for steering and things like that, um, going up a, up a curb or something like that. Here, we're probably chilling, you're, you're not in traffic, no cars are behind you, it's a good place to just re relax. This drop bar portion, if your hands are here, uh, you're very hunched over, maybe you're trying to be super aerodynamic, maybe you're descending down a hill. Um, it's also a good place to get some leverage for torque, so if you wanted to stand up and pedal and had to sprint, um, grabbing this area is gonna give you tons of leverage because your legs are pushing down as hard as you can and your arms are gonna anchor you down low right here. So with these systems here, um, the whole lever is gonna move. Actually, not on this one. Ooh, okay, so we got two levers. We have two levers. We have uh, a, a longer one here, more surface area. This one is gonna allow me to upshift, uh, have the chain go into a bigger gear, which is an easier pedaling gear, less resistance. If I need to go into a harder pedaling gear, as soon as I start gaining speed and I wanna go faster, I'm gonna hit this smaller one. And it's just one click at a time. So it's depending how quickly you, you can shift, that's how quickly your chain's gonna, gonna move. So here's a pretty cool feature on this derailleur. Um, you might find this common on Shimano's have a switch. So there's a switch right here. Everything's blended in and it actually has two dots. The top dot is a solid white. Down here, it's uh, just a circle with the black in the middle. So this switch can move up and it can move down. There we go. So what this is gonna do is it's going to apply pressure. There's a spring built in here. This is an arm. So we're gonna call this the, the derailleur cage. We have a rolling pulley wheel here and a rolling pulley wheel here at the top. So this cage has this length right here. So I'm gonna turn this in the down position, which is the, the, just the circle with the black in the middle. Basically it turns off the clutch, which is taking spring tension away. So it allows me to move this very easily. So when I go to remove my wheel, and I have to take my wheel out, there's less spring tension, so I can manipulate this whole derailleur a little bit easier. You always wanna have the switch on in the up position, the solid white. So that's gonna create more tension on the spring here. So when I go to push this, it's much harder to push. If I try very hard, I can get it to move. And you can actually hear some ratcheting on that one. So that extra pressure, when it's always in the on position, it's gonna keep the chain a little tighter, which means it's gonna stay tighter on your gearing for the rear as well as the front. So a cool thing about this is um, it's meant to be riding in the on position all the time. So I'm gonna turn it off for just an example. So every time you hit a bump, we're hitting bumps, boom. You feel that vibration, you're, you feel it in your seat, you feel it in your hands when you're on the handlebar. 
Well, the chain could be also feeling that as well. So with this less spring tension, every time you hit that bump, boom, chain does that. So now we have a little slack in the system here in the chain, which means it has the ability to be loose on our gearing and maybe want to jump off a gear, but mostly it's probably want to jump off the front chain ring over here. So too little pressure every time we hit a bump, boom. And there's always a chance this chain could want to jump and maybe hit the side of your tire. But with little tension, this chain could actually fall off. It's either going to fall off on the inside or fall off on the outside of the bike. And then boom, I'm sure you may have experienced that at some point. And then if you ever have that happen, here's a quick reference. You can grab the back of your derailleur cage, push that forward, create that extra slack. And then you have a better time getting your chain back on. Another cool feature to point out on these front chain rings, and this is in conjunction with our clutch of that rear derailleur to keep chain tight or keep the chain on this chain ring at all times. The chain ring itself, every other tooth has a wide tooth and then a skinny tooth, um, also called wide, narrow, wide, narrow. So you're going to see that on these teeth here. So that's our wide tooth. So width wise, it's a little thicker. Then we jump to the next one here is very skinny and you're going to see that consistency. Next one's wide and then thin and so on. I've got a narrow one. So just having that extra thickness right there is actually going to fill more space when it's in your chain. And you can see that right here. So here's our wide tooth and it's going into the wider link. So more material is filling this area. The next link is a narrow link. So we have a thinner tooth and that just continues on down the line. So it's going to hold maybe hold the chain a little better, but it also has to release. So it can't be too tight of a fit. So those features right there are pretty cool. Um, that's pretty common on bikes today that are coming, uh, that are built for off-road, whether it's a mountain bike, whether it's a hardtail, full suspension. Uh, now today, gravel bikes are pretty popular. Like this bike, you could probably look at it and call it a gravel bike. Um, you could also call it a commuter bike. You can call it a recreational bike. You can call it a, a college grad bike or whatever. Um, but those things right there, because they got rid of the front derailleur, there's no longer that cage we were used to seeing, which was actually housing or going over the chain, giving it some security. So when you hit bumps, the less chance of that chain wanting to fall off. So we got rid of that. So now that that's missing, we needed to give this chain some protection when you do go into that bumpy terrain. So thick tooth, narrow tooth for here, and then extra tension over here. Keep that chain from getting too loose and sloppy, always keeping tension mainly on this big chain ring and of course it will assist on the rear gearing back here. I do like the idea of this whole system one by whatever and, and it, that can be all different so uh, the more popular mountain bikes uh, full suspension trail enduro things like that uh, they're going to have probably 12 gears that's the latest and greatest so after you hit a certain price point you know say we go 2500 and up 5000 bikes are getting crazy up to 10000 you're probably going to see a 12 speed on your mountain bikes maybe now on the gravel bikes as well uh, but you will see that whole clutch tensioning system uh, one gear in the front with the wide narrow wide chain ring um, they might even have a little more protection depending how gnarly or you know technical uh, you get you're getting down going downhill um, there could be another guide that's just for added protection, more insurance that's going to keep your chain intact when hitting those nasty areas, going off a of big jump, stuff like that, stutter bumps at high speeds. It's going to make it so much easier for people. Like a lot of people got confused with that front derailleur and even adjusting it. It could be its own beast, even though it had similarities with that rear derailleur. Some other cool features on, on these bikes, uh, depending on what you're, you want to do. It's very versatile. So I'm seeing there's a black dot here, which is actually a, a plastic cover for a screw. Probably have one on the other side. We have one on top here. And then following down here, there's actually two more holes right here. And it's going to be the same on the other side. So that's telling me we can put um, a different variety of racks on here. So if I wanted to carry a rack uh, just above the tire, have some saddlebags on the side, um, that gives me that versatility for this bike. And if we look in other areas, thing about it is you're getting that trickle down technology uh, even though the spike is is not very expensive we're getting disc brakes on this so here's our rotor or also called the disc and then our caliper sitting right here this is bolted to the frame so the bike dictates uh, what brake system you have so it bolts in two bolts right there um, this one happens to be cable actuated we can tell because there's an end of a cable here or a piece of wire 
Um, so when I squeeze that brake lever, this arm moves, moves your brake pad, and actually wants to squeeze this rotor right here. So uh, a cool thing about disc brakes is they are pretty pretty bomb proof for the most part. Uh, you can take them through water, they're self-cleaning. If you get them muddy, there's really no maintenance to do to them, self-cleaning. Uh, compared to your rim style brakes where the rubber pad has to hit the side of your, your wheel, there may be a slight delay of a, a few seconds if you're riding in the rain or you go through a puddle or something like that. But usually, you know, if, once you're used to it, you can just break a little earlier, you get used to that. Um, they're probably as finicky as regular brakes. Once you get the hang of uh, their little quirks, um, the rotor, yes, it can get slightly bent. Say your bike falls over, falls on a rock, or you're loading the car into a, with another bunch of other bikes. That's where a lot of damage happens. Bike gets scratched, maybe something gets bent, pedal gets stuck somewhere in a spoke. Um, those things can happen, but um, you know, you can also tweak that. You can straighten it up. Either you can figure that out yourself or take it into a shop. Um, and because it's cable, we're not hydraulic, so we don't have to worry about fluid. So the next upgrade, we're spending a little more money, but you're also getting a different feel from cable brakes to hydraulic. Just like um, you hear about power steering in, in a car, power brakes in a car, power windows. Um, what do we have to do? Maybe use one finger, maybe two fingers to operate something. Same idea. Um, I go to squeeze this lever, I can probably use one finger. Um, I don't have, there's not a lot of pressure. The feel is very easy, very light, but I can produce a ton of power with that. Um, of course, it's all susceptible to you know the the level of what you know what product you're you're buying, but um, that is considered a, a a nicer thing to have the hydraulic. And usually with hydraulic, it's it's not a problem. Uh, there's no other issues to worry about. You can. Um, you can go pretty pretty long without having any issues or doing any maintenance, just like anything else. So, um, feel is definitely nicer. Power is there, less fatigue if you're on long rides or have to do a lot of downhill or technical sections and be on the brakes and things like that.